today we're going to do another top five flies and the subject today as you can see in the description is top five flies for picky trout um, so we did I believe two weeks ago we did top five flies for uh, stock trout as a lot of waterways either starting at the beginning of the year or starting here in the next couple weeks they like they are locally um, but today we're going to talk about picky trout which would mean you know trout that have been in the system for a while holdovers but especially wild trout and before we even get into that, make sure that you check out everything below, all the descriptions here, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so that you get notified every time we put out a new video, and like the video here. Also, uh, throw some comments in the description there um, below so that uh, you can let us know how you are liking these videos and uh, what you want to see in the future. So today, I've got a box of flies here top five flies of uh, to be able to use for picky trout. So, um, the first thing that I would say when we're looking at this is go small. A lot of conversations I've been having with guys in the shop here recently is some of these bugs are hatching in two, three months from now. Um, so they're not fully grown. So I won't go into too many details, but basically they, they grow, they shuck their exoskeleton, they grow, they shuck their exoskeleton, you do that five, six, seven times, um, and each time they're growing bigger, just like a snake is shedding its skin. So they still have a couple more phases to go before they reach their full maturity size as a nymph, uh, let alone the adult size. So if they're hatching as a, you know, emerging and hatching as a 14, they might be at 20 or 18 now. So start small. So on that theme, one of the first flies we're gonna talk about is a zebra mitch. We have one here in red, let's see one close up here. Um, we have these in sizes, I believe, 18, 20, and 22s. Um, go small. These flies for picky fish, um, sometimes you just need to get smaller because they're seeing, especially if you're on water, that uh, seeing a lot of people, um, they're seeing a lot of flies that are probably oversized um, for what the water weight is and what the natural bug sources are. So smaller is better than bigger. Um, so check those out. We've got some more coming out in the zebra range and tungsten beads as well. Um, because sometimes you just need to get those little flies down. <clears throat> Next on that, we're going to move to um, some dry flies. So on the same theme, a Griffith's gnat. Griffith's gnat is one of my favorite uh, small dry flies. Uh, fairly easy fly to tie, even for those super small ones. Um, but it floats very high and it imitates both a midge, a grouping of midges, um, a handful of other other different types of bugs, but I like them smaller. I've seen them on other websites that are you know, up to 14s. I feel like this pattern in particular does really well in smaller sizes, 18, 20, 22, 24, if you can get them down that size. Um, but this, it sits high, uh, just a great floating fly. I like fishing them, fishing them mainly on the edges of streams. Um, or you might see some midge clusters, but also you know, some tiny bugs that have fallen off the trees and stuff that the, the trout are picking off. Next is, we'll talk about emergers. So I've got kind of two different styles of emergers here. The next one here, as you'll see close up, is just a caddis emerger. We call this the sedge hammer. It's just a pattern that we have on the site. Um, so it's got elk hair on top and it's got a dubbing that's more of a nymph dubbing on the curve of the shank. Um, so that allows the top to float to the bottom to sink and gets in that film. Um, that film is a great opportunity for fish to eat. So um, uh, these bugs as they're coming up, mainly the caddis and mayflies, are struggling to get out of their, their nymph shuck. Um, and to turn into the adult and fly away. So that's a very vulnerable stage um, for these, uh, these bugs, and the fish really like taking uh, uh, the opportunity for that. Um, the next thing is we've got a wet fly here. Wet flies are, um, I don't know, I've seen some people say they're coming back, some people say they're too old, uh, but when you really look at fishing a wet fly correctly, which is mainly being swung through the current, so if the current is flowing this way, we are quartering our cast downstream, so a 45 degree angle, casting towards the opposite bank and holding those flies through the current. There are different techniques, we won't go into those today, um, but what that's usually doing is allowing that fly to swing through the current or actually to, to look like it's emerging as well um, through the current towards the top of the surface there. And, and just like when they're um, on the top of the water, um, 
uh, getting rid of their shucks and moving into adults. This is also a very vulnerable stage as they're moving through the water column towards the top of the surface um, that the fish really like to uh, take advantage of. So we've got a handful of flies on the site as wet flies. We're also working on a couple more that will be here in the springtime. Um, but don't be afraid to do that. I really like fishing those for caddis hatches um, and small flies. One that I didn't uh, um, put in here, but the RS2 is a great little emerger pattern that you can tie in very small um, sizes and, and swim through the current as an emerger as well. And then last, but certainly not least, is this spinner pattern. So this is a spinner pattern I've developed over the last 10-12 um, years. Um, I felt that a lot of traditional spinners with some sort of um, synthetic wing is don't look as natural as the actual bugs. So when you look at this, here's the picture up close. Um, you can see it's a lot different than what you're usually seeing in other spinner patterns. So we've got the long microfiber tails, we've got your typical dry fly dubbing, um, but that's kind of where it ends. And the top there, you can see the little bit of orange there um, as a foam, a little bit of foam. So this serves two purposes for me. One, it's a cider so that you can see some of these flies because a lot of times um, it's dark out when you're fishing spinner patterns like scientists they're mating and dropping their eggs and dying off um, and then two I don't know if it's really that case but it makes me feel better that little bit of foam helps you float that fly a little bit longer for an extra fish or two before it gets too dark and you've got to change over your flies or it gets too waterlogged or whatever else um, so I like the dual purpose in that in that brighter color you flip it upside down and look at it from the bottom you can't see that the other thing you'll notice is there's not a synthetic one on these. These are a, uh, like a grizzly hackle. What I do is I do 2x oversize on the hackle. So if it's a size 14 fly, I'm using a hackle the size of a 10. Um, when I look at the natural bugs, the wings are a little bit longer. Um, when you look at some of the synthetics, they just don't sit the right way. And a lot of them are a model color, so that's why I use the grizzly on mine. You can definitely sub in other colors with the hackles as well. Um, I've fished these kind of side by side with a synthetic wing and this is out produced drastically. Um, so be sure to check those out. Uh, one of my little creations that I've kind of tweaked and adjusted over the years had been tied for, uh, for the website and shop as well. So when you're out there, lots of tips that I can talk about in terms of picky trout. Um, some of the best tips that I'll give you is your game design. Um, you want to go as drag free as possible on both nymphing and on your dry flies, especially for dry flies, if you're not getting a very long drift, um, you can add longer, a longer leader, a longer tippet section. Um, this kind of helps in some ways and hurts in others. If all of a sudden you've got a three foot tippet section, you move it to five feet, uh, you're gonna lose a little bit of accuracy, but the longer that tippet is, you're gonna get a little bit longer drift. Um, so it's kind of a give and take relationship there. Um, on nymphing, I talk a lot about keeping a straight line uh, tippet on your nymphing leaders because you've got more drag on a tapered leader on the thick section than you do on the thin section. Um, so it's going to drag different when you're looking at an up and down water column. So try to keep, you can taper a little bit on the top, um, but when you're actually dropping your tippet section down into your fly or multiple flies, try to keep that as straight as possible with a little taper. Um, so that you get the same drag coefficient all the way through the water column there. I can talk about all these subjects in more detail, but today was all talking about the top five flies for picky trout. So you can check out all those flies below. Um, you probably missed our other sales where we did flies and fly boxes. We've got a couple other things coming up. And last but certainly not least is this coming Friday. If you're not subscribed to our Facebook page, make sure that you do that. We're doing a live event this Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we'll do it for probably one to two hours, depending on how much questions and answers we get. We didn't have any shows this year because they all got canceled. Um, so what we're doing is just a live event where we're going through product demonstrations, um, talking about some things that we brought out last year in a little bit more detail. So we usually like to do those face-to-face -face with people, but we couldn't this year. Um, and then give a little bit of insight as to some new projects that we are working on. Not only that, when you log on to the video, you will have a coupon code for 20% off of the whole site. Um, so that'll only be announced in the video, so you have to watch it. You can't uh, check out uh, you know, the description on it or anything else. It'll be in the video itself. 
Um, so you don't want to miss out on that. Grab some gear as the upcoming spring season is just around the corner. It's starting to warm up here. We're uh, itching to fish. Uh, a lot of good fishing locally has actually been starting here in the last two weeks for us. So subscribe to our Risen Fly. We have two pages. One is just for the local fly shop that we have here. Um, but the Risen Fly page, which is the main page for our company, check that out. We'll be live there, and we're also going to try to be live on Instagram as well. Um, if we can get all the tech working for everything. Thank you guys again. I appreciate it. Like and subscribe to this channel. Um, if we can work it out, we'll try to do live on Facebook or on YouTube as well. Um, but two is probably enough for us today. Um, but yes, Friday, 5:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check that out. You don't want to miss it. We will be live so that you can ask all your questions. We'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, and then go through a lot of our products and go into more description, descriptions to um, what they are, how they work, what their intention is, best fit, uh, fish species to go after as well. Thank you guys again. Have a great day. We'll see you later.